Hello, welcome to News Now. I'm your host, Phil Swift. Oh, and I'm a co-host, Good Name. Today with me we have representatives from the Consumer Watchdogs. Um, my name's Sophia. I'm Alejandro. And from Means Jeans Incorporated. Thank you, Phil. I'm Karen Means. I am Angel C. Assistant CEO of Means Jeans. Okay. Today they will be debating Means Jeans' involvement in Denim Stand. So first, Means Jeans. Why did you choose a third world country like Denim Stand to build factories, and what positives has it had on the struggling economy? Well, Phil, we chose a third world country like Denim Stand because we believe that we should help the, econ the struggling economy of Denim Stand by putting up factories and offering more jobs to the lower class and working citizens of Denim Stand. We believe that we can help boost the economy and provide more of an income for the struggling families of Denim Stand. Do you have a response? Yes. Um, I, see your, I, I see your point of view on how you want to support the economy and get them back on their feet by supplying jobs. But I find that it's important that you guys make sure that um, that when you are boosting, uh, you are creating these jobs, they can support families, they can support people's education, because in these third world countries, education does not come for free like it does in the United States. So it does become very costly if you want to give your child a good education, or if you want to educate yourself and get a better job and develop your family to a better part of society and get out of poverty or get out of your, the lower class. And, and by supporting the economy, you want all people to get into a better standing ground to support themselves. Support themselves. Thank you. Um, to consumer watchdogs, what safety uh, standards do you believe Mean Jeans is breaking? Well, <coughs> so we, um, sorry, uh, inspectors of Den Denim Stand have surveyed the 10 most perilous garment factories and found that they're still bad environments because they're breaking over, um, they, ha they still have overloaded ceilings, exposed cables, uh, two two fire alarms, and a uh, locked exits, which uh, make it bad for everyone. To add on to that, um, there was incidents like in 2013 and 2012 where they started, they wanted more workers to produce faster and faster, so they kept on making buildings on top of buildings without proper safety standards, and they killed, um, they killed 500 to 3,000 people in these in these disasters. There, there was three main disasters that we heard of, but there's been small ones going uh, throughout the years that have only killed like 50 or 15, and they have gone unnoticed. So even though it looks like it has only happened a few times, it is happening constantly, and it is a big issue. And besides the physical problem, the physical problems, there are, there are. Work, worker problems where women are being sec sexually harassed, verbally harassed, and psychologically harassed. And I think you should have a safe, a safe place to work and, and, and know that you won't be attacked every single day you go into work. And, and that's not fair for some workers. Yes, we acknowledge that there are some problems that need to be fixing, but we have done a lot in the recent years to try and improve the working con conditions and make our employees feel safer. This past year, in fact, we have established a department which has been tasked to monitor factories and improve working conditions where they are needed. A code of conduct has also been established that requires local, uh, local exhaust ventilation systems in every factory in order to improve the um, air quality that our employees breathe. Means jeans. We know that you pay workers above the minimum and average wage in Dennis Van. However, do you believe that the seven dollars a day you pay is a decent living wage? Yes. All right. So about that, the living wage in Denim Stand for two parents and just like an average family, two parents and two point two children. No, there's no such thing as two children. But it is that is one hundred seventy dollars a month. And that's rounded up. That's the yearly living wage uh, divided by 12 per month. Source. Mm -hmm. it Simple is. math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Professional no, news show. Chill. You don't need a source for that. Let him talk. Okay, so 
if that is 100, that's $170 per month for one person working at one of our factories a month. Now, 30, we're going to use 30 as a month here. 7 times 30 is 210, that's basic math. So we pay $40 a month above the living wage for two parents and 2.2 children. That's two working parents. Do you have a response, watchdogs? <laughs> so, uh, it says here from uh, garmentfactories.com <laughs> that um, uh, tourism <coughs> companies such as man don't give actual living wages because you don't, um, is because you could be exposed to liability. Uh, and that co can cost you more than a million dollars for one person, as it did with one Australian worker. And so if you were exposed, and you had all this liability, then you would be exposed to... I, I do have a question. So if you think the living wage for these people is $7 a day, then what is your living wage? What What is supporting you to where you're at? Because if you think that... If you were paid seven dollars and seven dollars a day, do you think you would be able to maintain the same lifestyle that you have? Well, this is a different economy. This is different. Well, you have to look into the, the Bangladeshi taka, which is their not taka taka, which is their which is their you know currency. It's a different economy. They've got a much poorer economy, and uh, bread is or bread or. Whatever, uh, I, rice, I also they wanted want to, to make the point that you said you have a livable wage, but that it, but you're, <laughs> even though you have the highest um, wages in Danem stand, it is still not a livable wage. Seven dollars a day is not livable, a uh, livable wage for the the average American. You probably get a, uh, um, we made we made it where you get ten dollars an hour, and that if you work. Uh, these workers work 12 to 16 hours a day, and you would get like one, or like $160 a day, not $7 a day for working even harder than the average American usually. Here, just think, like like my assistant has said, this is a different country, a completely different economy. What works in the U.S. doesn't necessarily work in Denham Stan. There, there's a vast difference between the economy and like rate of exchange in like a third world country and a first world country like we live in live in. But I still do not even in these third world countries, seven dollars a day is not enough to support a whole family. Even if two even if two um two parent two parents are working seven dollars a day, that is very hard to support an entire family. Mm. This is for consumer watchdogs. What is your approach and ideas to improve the lives of the workers in Denham Stand? Well, first off, I want to. Um, I think, I, I think that it's important that we work on the 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 workplace and how how they are functioning and better ways to keep the workers safe. There is a strategy called lean manufacturing, which emphasizes efficient efficiency and responsive responsiveness to increase uh, product production quality, which will, which in turn means you teach the workers to do multiple things and they use resources wisely, they make sure that they, they cut down on using bad chemicals that hurt the environment around them, in turn protecting the places where they live and keeping fresher water by not letting these chemicals go into their water or go into their plants and keeping the places where they live safe. And by making it, um, by making it, um, by keeping it efficient and and making sure you're using your materials wisely, you also save money by keep by being able to to make more, and it it will help your company and it will help these workers stay in a better better place. Also, um, we plan to have American um, companies um, sign a, a safety accord that ensures the protection of Bangladesh. Sorry, Denim Stan workers from unsafe conditions at work because they didn't. They were the only ones who did not sign that. Well, uh, from what you said, and then I'll go back to Sophia's point, we have followed accords on the fire and safety building safety regulations created after the Rana Plaza fire in, um, in Denham Stan. 
And as for creating a more lean, uh, what do you call it, a lean? Lean manufacturing. Lean manufacturing. This can be a good idea, but starting right now to completely change the way how we use, how we um, produce in our factories and change the way we manufacture will cause a huge stop in product flow and will not be very beneficial for the long-term effect, uh, uh, short-term effect of lean machines. However, it has shown in studies that uh, places like Nike and and other companies, they have done 100% lean manufacturing and their factory letter grades have gone up over um, uh, from half to a full letter grade. So the, it is showing that people who are going through these factories see that it's working better and sees that it is good. So by having, by having the, the system in, you won't have to worry about the safety well, you do have to worry about the safety of your workers, but this is just a, a bigger step that will keep it in, like, in locked for a, a while, and it will also make your company look good. <coughs> okay, so the Fever Watchdog brought up the safety of your workers and mean genes. What have you done to improve the work conditions abroad, and how do your workers and factories get treated? Well, like I said, we have established code of conducts, and that's a department which tracks and helps to monitor certain factories that um, do not have good and safe working conditions for our employees. If we know that a certain supplier is running factories that are unsafe for our workers, we will immediately pull out of the deal and shut down these factories. We do not stand, we believe that all our employees in third world countries should be treated with respect and be able to work in a safe and friendly environment. I, I think that it's, it's understandable that you pull out from these countries because they are not in safe conditions, but I think your company should be making the change, should be making the effort to be making sure that these companies are safe because these companies will just sign off with somebody else and keep on doing the same things and hurting these workers. So instead of just leaving the country and leaving this business, this part of the, the, this business, you should, you should make sure that you should just go in there, be help be held accountable and say, even though I didn't start this, I should help it. I should improve this way that they're working. They shouldn't be stuck like this. You should you should be their voice to help them in, in this in, in in this problem because some people are too afraid to lose their jobs. They don't want to speak up and say that my working environment sucks. And if they say that, they will get fired and there will be more people willing to get their job even though the salary sucks and the environment is horrific. And that would vastly it will enlarge your whole what what is it um, the shoppers or ever everyday customers that go there because you'll get a higher you'll you'll look better and the the more people that you have saved will go over to your and they and saving somebody's lives will ultimately basically have them well I can't. Speak to them, but I'm pretty sure if that they would go to you because they're grateful. Yes, and we have done some of these things. We've informed all factory workers about workplace safety. We allow workers to raise complaints and refuse unsafe work without repercussions. Okay, thank you. So we touched on the wages a little bit, but um, watchdog. Yes, for consumer watchdogs. Um, how much do you want mean jeans, workers, and denim to be paid? I think, um, I think the pay should depend on the type of job. If you're putting in more time and more hours, you should get paid more. If you're putting in a few hours, you can be paid less. But I think $7 is not a livable wage per day. I think it should be more of $10 or $12 a day, because then you could... And then you could, <laughs> and, and then that would actually get them get them somewhere economically where they can actually um, support their family. They could actually save save money and and plan for the future. Yes, I acknowledge it. And as we as we uh, <coughs> said, we pay our workers up to two hundred ten dollars per month, based upon our workers and them stands request. They have wanted one hundred eighty nine dollars per month. We have exceeded their request of what they think they'll be able to live on. How, however, even though the, this, this developing country 
struggles with standards. It struggles with what should be the minimum wage and what shouldn't. And so those are very weakened in that country. So the, this company will say, we don't want to pay them that much. So we don't want to pay them that much. And they're like, you shouldn't either. So you can save money. But what you should really be do, doing is setting the standard for other 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 factories that it should be this price, even though the government says that uh, the government doesn't uphold that it should be this this amount, or the factories don't uphold that it should be this amount. You should be making sure that they should be paired, pay, 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 paid fairly for the hard hours that they work every single day. Yes, and we do set the standard. We do pay our workers more than they will get any, at any other factory in denim stand. We are setting the standard for standards for what our workers should be paid. Mean jeans. How much more, so we know mean jeans are relatively cheap and that's what their business is built off of. How much more expensive would the mean jeans be if you implemented a similar wage to what consumer watchdogs want? Probably have to, because if we do, if we do ten dollars per day, that's one million dollars going one million one one hundred seventy thousand dollars per day going to uh, denim standing denim standing workers and I, I think about you, uh, the conversion is about twelve for uh, Bangladeshi taka or, or denim standing taka for one U.S. dollar so that's a lot of money uh, and we already pay them more than the living wage we already paid them. Uh, more than they ask. So, if we had to raise it, probably the price would go up maybe to $20, maybe even more. And this, this will be like any other jeans price out on the market. This will cause other, we, we don't want competition between other brands. We're known for our cheap clothing. That's why people come to us instead of going to say like, Gucci jeans, <laughs> like that. We're known for our cheap clothing. If we raise the price to a price like any other jeans, then our customers may go to other buyers. We we don't want them. We don't we don't want them to move to different brands. We want to control the market to provide lower price jeans to more lower class people that can't afford, say, twenty or twenty five dollar jeans. But I would like you to notice that the average person spends $35 on one single pair of jeans. And some, some people even spend $150, $300, and $500 uh, on a pair of jeans. It, it sounds bizarre, but people do this every single day. Well, those are outliers. Uh, Sorry. Those are outliers. Not everyone I said, I said the average person spends $35 on average on jeans. However, there are some people who pay this sum. I'm not saying everybody pays that sum, but some people do. Okay? And you said that you would have to change it to 20 or maybe a little bit more. And, this, That's and, and, and what you can do if, is, since you're, instead of, the, we do have an issue with making cheaper clothes because they do go, they, even though, they are cheap and they do get used faster and get thrown out faster. So what you can you can do to also help the environment is you can make you could raise the prices and make them better quality, <coughs> make them longer lasting, and this will prevent per, this will help the environment from being constantly polluted with <coughs> pairs of jeans. You'd be surprised. Like how yes, many yeah. as you said, your average um, thirty five dollars people are spending thirty five dollars on jeans. This is, this is focused, or even like $150, this is focused on the upper and middle class. We try and focus on providing for the lower class that can't afford to spend $35 on jeans. That is why we have our jeans so cheap and still, still a good enough quality that it can be used and worn with proper care. I mean, you can't go around like chasing through the wilderness expecting your jeans not to rip every once in a while. Based upon um, what the average person does every day, our jeans do last, and we provide for the lower class economy that can't afford to spend $30, $35 on jeans. Then maybe I might encourage you to have a part for the lower class, the, the middle class, like to, to pay for that, and a little bit of the upper class, because they will be willing to pay for that. And you could get a lot of money from that to support your workers. So maybe if you make two... 
two different types and sell both of them, you could support your, your workers and your company. So if you had a true slogan, wouldn't it, would it be, we make lower class suffer so that we, that lower class can pay for the lower, other lower class suffering? <laughs> I don't know. So, you're making yeah. So, the, a that that's not our slogan. Well, I'm saying you would true. have <laughs> one. Is that w that? Because I, I, I can see I can see where it's going. I think it's yeah. trying to say you make uh, you have lower class make stuff for other lower class. Are you oh, well, lower class is paying for lower class. Well, we, I would we, like to we benefit. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to refute his point. We actually benefit our workers in Denistan by giving them jobs, giving them experience, actually helping them, actually helping them. Do you actually pay what them benefit? Yeah, what <laughs> money? Yes. A job? It's for no. It's no, the that's not what I'm asking. Yeah. The job that's not what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, for right. the job market in Denistan for this good of work and this good of money. Uh, right before you explain why. $210 um, every month is great living. In Some Americans make $100 a week. In, yeah, in America. Yeah. Different this is a first world country, not a third world country. Different but if we want to get them to a first world country or a second world country that's actually economically balanced, then we got... We yeah, gotta slowly one, increase it. Yeah. One company, yeah, can't one, just one company yeah. cannot change the whole economy of a whole country. You can't suddenly a, one well, yeah. company can't just raise not. raise a third world country up to a first world country. Yeah, that would take there a matter is, of decades. There is no minimum wage. If we were really evil, we would just be lit. You would just pay them the average there is no minimum wage. The average wage. But we're going above and beyond paying them two hundred ten dollars a month. I wouldn't say beyond. I wouldn't say beyond above. above. Okay, maybe above. It's still not. It's still not. As it's if better. Were, okay. okay, guys, stop. On, on to the next question. For consumer watchdogs, do you believe that workers in third world nations should have insurance or other benefits from companies such as Mean Jeans? I do believe that they should. They should have insurance, uh, insurance and benefits from these companies because they're. You, if you go into one of these factories, there are sewing machines. There, there are there are all these different machines that you use to manufacture and manufacture these things. And even as safe as people can be, things do happen in factories. People do get hurt. Pe some people even die because of the of of different things. Even with so many safety precautions. And I think it's important that you should protect your um, your the people that you are paying because you want them to come back. You want them to keep on working for you. Even, and you want to make sure that they feel safe in, in that environment, not just like socially, not just socially, but um, but know that they have a safety net to catch them if they do in fact get hurt. Yes, and we do, as I have said, we do provide our workers with safer conditions. We, our workers come back because we provide more money for them and their families than they will get in any other factory. The, the problem is providing insurance and, like, say, health care to employees in a first world country is completely different than trying to employ things like insurance and health care in a third world country like Denimstan, where it is an extremely underinsured nation. There are no insurance companies in Denimstan. We would have to start our own insurance company. We would have to just completely just rethink everything we do with our workers. It, it's, a, it's a very complicated process, and we are taking steps to help insure our workers, but you can't just immediately offer insurance. You don't, you don't have to create your own insurance company. You could actually just ask some, like an insurance company from the yeah. United States to try to work with this third world country. Because you are an American company. <clears throat> yes, and we have. We have been working with APON Wellbeing to help it provide um, food and goods at a discount to our workers. Is that like you're you're making sure that they're safe in the factories and you can pay for them if they get hurt? What is that? We are see the thing. You you cannot simply pay people if they get injured. What is Apon doing? That's my question. Apon is setting up shops inside factories that sell foods and goods at discount to the workers. So instead of going to say their flea market and spending like I don't know, 150 dakas on 
three loaves of bread, they can go to Apon and spend, say, it's like 70 dakas yeah. on three <coughs> loaves of bread. How is, that, how, how is that making sure that the, the workers, um, if they get hurt, stays, uh, can get reimbursed? How does that keep... How, because if that's... Could, I know that does help them with money-wise, but you need to make sure that you can keep, if your workers do in fact get, get hurt, you can make sure that they can get, they can get healed, they, they have time to heal, and they have time to, to, get, to take, take a break and then come back. Again, this all goes back to money, and since we are paying them a lot more than, than the wages they need, and since we're giving them a discount, they've got more than enough money to pay for medical costs, because again, Third world country, different costs or different things. It's not like forty thousand dollars if you break your rib or something. Okay, okay. So we're running out of time here. So mean jeans, what are your concluding thoughts on this debate? Well we just we would just like to say we have considered many things consumer watchdogs have said and we have been taking steps to uh, have our workers work in a more safe environment and we have been taking steps to try and improve their benefits. We cannot do these all these things overnight. But we definitely consider the things you said. Um, I think it it is important that they. The, I find it valuable that they are trying their best to do certain things, but it is important that they make sure that their workers uh, are being taken care of completely. They are being treated fairly, and that they are not completely taking advantage of them. Yeah, and with that, they can also implement. Other say other working working ways and conditions. Okay, thank you for watching News Now. I'm your host Bill Swift. I'm your co-host. Good name. This is us signing out. Mm -hmm.